very warm welcome from uh, uh, Chemical Weekly magazine. Uh, this is an exclusive uh, which will be featuring uh, German conglomerate Henkel. Uh, in India, Henkel is uh, uh, known more for their adhesive business. So to get to know more about the company, uh, we have pleasure in uh, talking to Mr. Shilip Kumar. He is the president of Henkel India. He has been at the helm for over four years now. Uh, he joined uh, Henkel in about 2011 uh, with the additive technology business and now he heads the uh, India business. So Mr. Kumar, a warm welcome to this uh, exclusive with Ke Chemical Weekly. So, so at the outset, uh, for the benefit of some of our viewers who may not be aware of the breadth of uh, product portfolio of Henkel, can you probably very briefly summarize your businesses in India and how it might probably differ from your global uh, business? Sure, sure, Biju. First of all, uh, thank you very much uh, for this interaction. Uh, yes, so Henkel, as you mentioned, is a, is a German, German uh, conglomerate. And we have, uh, we have three major businesses. Uh, adhesive technologies, which you mentioned, and which is, of course, uh, the biggest business that we have in India. And uh, in addition to that, we also have uh, laundry and home care and uh, beauty care. Um, in India, we, uh, we operate primarily in adhesive technologies and also the uh, beauty care professional business. So this is the business uh, which is done through the salons. So uh, the, these are the two businesses that we participate uh, in in India. Um, yeah, back to you, Biju. Yeah. So uh, the question everybody would need to ask is how is Henkel coping with the COVID-19 uh, situation? How it has impacted your manufacturing operations or prob probably product offtake? Uh, how are you coping with it? Yes, and that's a, that's a question that we are all sort of grappling with over the last few months. So... Uh, Yes, you know, when it started in May, in March, uh, one could not have uh, really envisaged that it would be going so long and we would have uh, this kind of a situation. Now we are in the almost the fifth month of this uh, whole thing. Um, but I would say that, uh, you know, there were, there were three things that we had to do uh, immediately uh, when, uh, when the pandemic uh, really hit us. Uh, at the beginning, as I, I must be very honest, uh, we probably did not understand, uh, you know, the, the overall impact of what is coming and uh, what kind of impact it could have on our business. We, we did believe that it was more of a, you know, a shorter term thing and uh, would sort of uh, sort itself out over a reasonable period of time. However, um, as things moved along, it was very clear that uh, we are in this for a bit of a long haul. I would say the first element that we had to look at was the business continuity element. Which is, uh, which is to restart the factory. So the factories were probably shut in the last week of March, uh, awaiting some government guidelines on you know, what is permitted, what is not. Um, those guidelines did come in the, in the beginning of April. Uh, in the first week of April, we, uh, we started, uh, I would say 25% of our operation was started in the first week of April. Uh, purely catering to uh, essential goods. Are your manufacturing operations back to normal completely or is it uh, functioning at half the capacities? How is it? So currently we have the, uh, you know, we don't have any restrictions from the government side. You know, all the sites, uh, I'm very happy to uh, inform you that all the sites are open. Uh, we are catering to uh, all our customer demands, you know, so something that we feel very proud about that uh, no customer line in India stopped because uh, a Henkel product uh, was not supplied. Um, you know, I would even say that we were one step ahead of the game and uh, we worked with some of our customers to, uh, to really educate them on, uh, you know, what are the procedures to be followed to start the operations. And uh, they, of course, uh, are very... Uh, you know, uh, they, they, they are, they are quite uh, happy about that and they could also restart. And of course, from our perspective, it also adds to our demand. So, uh, you know, it's a kind of a win-win. 
So yes, all our plants are operational. Uh, how do you see the recovery now? How, how do you see your main end uh, users recovering, uh, like even like uh, automobiles or construction? Do you see recovery happening anytime soon or would it be a long drawn process? Yeah, so as you rightly said, Biju, you know, recovery across different industries is going to be a bit different. Um, you know, clearly you mentioned uh, two industries which probably are, uh, you know, facing the brunt of the problem, you know, uh, automotive, uh, you know, April, May, even part of June was really, really bad, you know, virtually down to a standstill. Even the construction industry was in pretty bad shape. Um, probably the industries which have revived, uh, you know, the fastest are relating to the essentials, you know, the everyday needs of people. So we have, uh, for example, uh, a pretty large business in, um, in packaging. So things uh, like flexible packaging or rigid packaging, you know, which are primarily used for foods and uh, those kind of products. Those industries, I would say, are almost, they are back to normal. In fact, in some of the industries, they are even doing better than normal. Uh, but um, so, you know, if you have a consumer bias and you are biased more towards essential goods, then, of course, those industries have revived very well. However, um, when you go on to the industrial side, uh, uh, you know, the recovery has certainly started. So even automobile, as you mentioned, uh, you know, starting from, uh, I would say, even June, second half, things started coming back. July was, uh, you know, even a bit better than expected. Uh, I hope that this will continue as we move along. But uh, they are definitely, you know, beyond, uh, I would say, the 50% level and probably moving towards the 70, 80% level soon if, you know, things remain uh, the way they are and there are no further lockdowns or shocks of any nature. I believe this recovery will continue. Uh, but, you know, you must realize that uh, even when we are comparing to last year, last year was not a particularly good year for the industry. So we were actually very hopeful that we would get very strong growth in this year. But now we have started comparing ourselves to last year's numbers. And even getting to last year's numbers is a, is a challenge. But my hope is that uh, at least uh, sometime in Q4, I am, of course, keeping my fingers crossed, but sometime in Q4, at least uh, on a run rate basis, you know, month to month basis, uh, we should come close to last year's levels if things do not, uh, do not deteriorate any further. That, that's, that's the hope. Currently, I would say if you take a weighted average of you know, all the industries that we participate in, we probably are uh, inching towards the 75% kind of uh, number. And uh, I hope we will gradually go up to 100% by the end of the calendar year. Okay. Uh, so coming back to probably your investments in, in Kurkum, which instantly was just before everything happened. Uh, uh, will will these uh, times would have any impact on how you plan to invest in India in 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 Kurkum or will it be wait and watch till the situation improves? Yeah, so Kurkum, of course, is our biggest investment in India. Um, it was, of course, opened. Uh, the formal opening was uh, in the beginning of this year. You are quite right. Uh, just before, in fact, in the month of February. Um, but, you know, we have been working on the Kurkum site for the last, uh, I would say, close to five years now. So we bought the site more than five years back. Um, and now, you know, um, phase one is uh, complete. You know, phase two is also complete. In fact, phase two was primarily for uh, the automotive industry. So we had a situation where we were ready, but uh, the industry was shut. So... Um, you know, clearly we had to delay uh, all these product qualifications and trials that we normally do. They had to get pushed back by about one or two quarters. But from a, you know, from a plant perspective, the plant is uh, up and running completely. 
Okay. Uh, coming to innovation, which is probably one of the biggest strengths of Henkel. Uh, how how do you how do you strategize innovation? Do you do you combine with uh, institutes here to sort of boost innovation activities at your end? You also have your innovation center. So uh, how, how do you how do you plan your innovations? Considering that the end use areas are so vast. Yeah, so you know we uh, we have a global function which uh, in fact we call it uh, product development. but it is definitely it goes across uh, all forms of uh, innovation um uh, and i i'll sort of restrict myself to uh, you know the the products and application innovation because you know there are other innovations as well you know things to do with business models or entering new markets so i i will stay out of that for the time being just to sort of keep the answer focused uh, um so we have this product development uh, division within uh, adhesive technologies and um, you know i'm again happy i'm sure you all are aware of it uh, we have uh, we have two innovation centers in india uh, one in uh, pune and uh, one in uh, thane here at uh, at kopar khairane in navi mumbai so um, these two innovation centers are very much part of the global network so you know we have about uh, i'm talking now specifically about adhesive technologies you know clearly we have uh, uh, centers in each of our regions for example in uh, europe it would be in germany in uh, the united states we have two or three locations in uh, in china it is in shanghai and in india we have these two locations and we have uh, one in in latin america as well so these are very well sort of networked and uh, you know there is a lot of interaction going on between this community so that the learnings from different parts of the world are shared uh, very fast and also not only the learnings but the challenges that are coming from the market are also shared equally fast so uh, you know we are we are very happy in india that we have these two technical centers and you know if there is uh, anything coming from the voice of the customer Uh, in terms of a new application or a new property required or a new uh, performance characteristic you know we can then put it into this system and turn it around through our baskets of technologies extremely fast i think that is one of the one of the biggest strengths of henkel uh, in terms of global networking of product development and innovation resources and also you know information sharing which which could actually work in the reverse direction where uh, you know you would then go to customers and talk about certain developments that are happening in other parts of the world and encourage them to look at you know similar markets of that nature in india so i think this this whole uh, uh, networking works extremely well um you know we of course have a, a you know a bigger vision for innovation uh, in india uh we would uh, you know we are we are already in the process of presenting a, a proposal to our senior management uh, to really further invest uh, in innovation capability in india uh you know clearly uh, what we have today we are now running absolutely at uh, complete capacity utilization you know you know that uh, when anybody runs at 100% capacity utilization you need to expand so that is our that is our objective we want to we want to expand our innovation capability in india and even you know go to a go to a place where uh, india can uh, be used as an innovation hub for uh, henkel in other parts of the world as well so let's uh, i hope that i will have something uh, you know good to announce to you all uh, in the near future but we are working on this okay uh in terms of expanding your uh, presence in india uh, globally henkel has said that it would look at opportunities for acquisition if it, it fits their portfolio would something like that in india would uh, would be on uh, henkel's mind if if it's a right fit now given that valuations would be attractive yeah so you, you know you know having uh, read about henkel i'm sure you would know that uh, Uh, we have had a lot of inorganic growth over the years you know 
uh, we we are uh, in fact one of our core competencies is to acquire companies and integrate them into our company so uh, we are perpetually on the on the lookout for opportunities like the one you suggested uh, you know in india also we did uh, significant sized acquisitions of course they were probably in the 5 to 10 year period back we have not done one in the recent past in india but um, you know all all i would say is that uh, you know we we have now grown to a certain size in india uh, and also in the world where uh, you know we are, we are looking as you called it the right fit so the right fit also has to have a critical mass you know or at least the uh, it should show us enough in terms of uh, a future critical mass uh, what we find in india is that uh, there are quite a few interesting opportunities but uh, you know they are perhaps a bit uh, too small when you look at uh, when you look at the size and scale at which we operate or we are not able to see uh, you know the future how those companies would grow um so you know we we are very particular on uh, on how we go about these acquisitions so we are perpetually on the lookout but uh, not we have we've not been able to find that right fit over the last uh, at least the last 4 years that uh, i have been in india you know we've had uh, probably in excess of uh, 50 discussions with uh, various people but you know we would not get into something unless it really makes sense from our from our strategy perspective so, so from from your interactions with other companies uh, what is your assessment of the indian chemical industry where where it is it stand how 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 can it grow now okay so you know we we don't believe that we are uh, you know chemical uh, industry is a is a bit of a um you know a narrow way of describing us so we 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 look at it more as a specialty material solutions but you know uh, okay you could sort of uh, link that to say the specialty chemical industry maybe i comment a little bit about the specialty chemical industry because you know commodity chemicals have a completely different uh, cycle you know they work on a completely different concept altogether um so i i talk a bit about the specialty chemical industry um i think india has uh, probably among the finest talent in the world um both in terms of uh, development operations uh you know applications i don't think we are we are second to anyone in the world when it comes to uh, talent in this country um you know wh- where we probably uh, are a bit of a disadvantage is uh, you know our our final cost structure and the cost structure as you know uh, you know is a, is constituted of many many different things you know the classical people keep talking about land and labor reform people keep talking about infrastructure you know these are the buzzwords but i'm sure you understand them very well that you know all these elements add cost and uh, you know in these industries uh, while of course you in a specialty chemical industry you would you would have a value proposition and you would be selling your product more on a value proposition rather than uh, on a pure price but uh, you cannot be you know out of whack on the price you have to be in the range uh, and uh, india does suffer to some extent uh, on that front but um, you know given now that uh, you know the the, the most cost competitive uh, uh, specialty chemical industry is in china I mean, there is no doubt about that uh, but given now um, the situation you know the geopolitical realities of the world i think this opens some <clears throat> pretty interesting uh, uh, pr- pretty interesting options for india as a country to sort of get a bit more engaged and you know enhance our market share in the specialty chemical industry you know specifically to henkel you know it doesn't make so much of a difference because you know henkel is a multinational we have operations in china in india in just about every country of the world so uh, you know we focus more uh, on the indian market whereas you know when you look at it as an industry i think our specialty chemical industry would gain a lot if they could be globally competitive and then they could export out of india you know even us in henkel 
you know, we, we like to compete for businesses outside of India. So then it's, it's really my endeavor here to make our operation as efficient as possible so that even within the Henkel system, I can, you know, make India a major exporting nation, which will definitely help, uh, you know, India as a country and uh, the Indian economy overall. But it's slightly different when you look at it uh, from a multinational perspective. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, maybe finally, a, a tough question for you. Where, where do you see Henkel in probably five years time from now? India, Henkel, India. So, you know, definitely uh, the, the journey in India has been a fantastic one. You know, if I go back to the 10 years that I have spent here, I mean, we have grown in leaps and bounds, uh, you know, maybe from not even having a critical size to now being a, a very significant sized company. Um, but I still believe that, you know, in this long race, we are not even, uh, you know, halfway to the the finish line, so to speak. You know, the finish line for me is when you just grow along with the market and you are really dependent on GDP and manufacturing economy, those kind of things. So I believe we are, we are in that journey. Uh, we, we are probably somewhere around halfway in that journey. Uh, there is ample, ample opportunity to grow in India, both organically as well as inorganically. So we continue to look at uh, possibilities to uh, acquire companies as we move along. But, um, you know, again, uh, I, I'm not supposed to be speaking any numbers or anything of that kind. But, uh, you know, I'll put it this way, that uh, if, we are, if we are unable to grow double-digit CAGRs over a long period of time, uh, I would be very disappointed. So I, I think India offers the potential to definitely grow CAGR double-digit. Of course, I am excluding 2020. So please don't, uh, you know, state that I said uh, we will grow 2020 ca double-digit CAGR. That is certainly not going to happen. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm looking at a longer period of time. So let's say you mentioned a five-year, seven, eight-year period. Uh, if you ignore 2020 and, you know, just take out 2020 from the calendar and just move straight from 2019 to 2021, uh, I, I believe that we can do double-digit growth uh, year on year, at least over the next uh, five years for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kumar. That was excellent. Uh, thank you for taking time to speak to us. It was a pleasure having you with us.